Hello Year 4, welcome to part 2 of English today. So let's finish off where we left off from the story. So we just arrived from the troop of the monkeys begging the man not to chop down the trees. Next, a toucan, a macaw and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. So you can see here you've got the three birds, the toucan, the macaw and the cock of the rock. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbush. And soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smouldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor! A ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. There is the, the tree frog all around. Well, this one's the one that's speaking to him, but there's lots around at the moment. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because its spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Think about the jaguar's response according um, as opposed to the other animals. What was the anim what was the jaguar more focused on? Kind of more focused on himself, wasn't he? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to survive? Oxygen. And, Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forests, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. They're really trying to persuade him not to cut down the tree. A, tree a three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yanomamo tribe, so a Yanomamo tribe is one of the tribes that exist in the Amazon rainforest. We're going to learn about those in a few weeks in geography. Knelt over the sleeping man, he murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. So this boy wanted to save the trees too because he actually lives in the rainforest. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. You can spot them all there if you pause the video here. Okay. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The, men sm the man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor. But he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated, then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. Okay, so we have just read The Great Kapok Tree. Now, before we focus on what the message was behind the story, have you came to a conclusion on whether it was a fiction or a non-fiction book? Pause the video and have a think. 
Okay, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but we're going to keep talking about it now. So we want to think about what the, was the main message behind the story. There was lots of things going on there. There was lots of animals. There was the, um, there was the boy from the tribe and there was the axe man. There was the great kapok tree. Now, what was the main message behind the story? What did you learn from that story? I would like you to pause the video, have a bit of a discussion if there's someone by beside you or if you're at school, but if you're not, then have a bit of a think. What was the main message of this story? What did you learn? Pause the video here, please. Okay, so you might have said that actually, the thing I learned from this is that all trees are equally important, despite no matter where they are in the world. You might have also said that everyone should think more carefully about cutting trees down or abusing them. You might have learnt that humans should refrain, so stop themselves, from destroying the natural world so that we can preserve it and keep it safe for the future. You might have said that trees are important to the animals and the creatures in the rainforest. They hold the soil in place during heavy rains, they provide food and shelter and they produce oxygen. All of these things we learnt from the animals. So this story has multiple meanings and it depends what you have learnt from the story, which, which depends on what the message will be for you. But those are just four examples of the different messages that this story holds. It's a very powerful story. Now thinking about the question I previously asked you, is this book fiction or non-fiction? Well, it's actually a fictional story because it has animals that talk, definitely not real. It's definitely not real because um, the animals could talk, but also um, there wasn't a real man who was chopping down the great kapok tree at that time. So it is a fictional story, but it has non-fiction information. It has information that is factual. So did you find out any non-fiction information about this story? What facts did you find out about this story, about the Amazon rainforest? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, well right at the start, do you remember, it was talking about the different layers of the rainforest, like the canopy and the emergent layer. That's non-fiction information, that's factual information. All of the information that the animals were saying was non-fiction information. Can you remember any of the reasons the animals gave to stop the man from cutting down the, rain, the great kapok tree? Mm, they said to him that the trees produce oxygen. Without the oxygen, the animals can't survive. They also said that it produces um, food for them. Different animals feed off that. And without that, they won't have that. It's also the shelter for them, provides them with a home. And without the home, they can be very vulnerable. All of this is non-fiction information. Why? Because it's factual, fantastic. Now, when you were reading this book, did you get persuaded to want to look after the rainforest after reading this book? What persuaded you to want to look after the rainforest? Pause the video and have a think. Maybe the fact that all of the animals were pleading the man to not cut down the rainforest helped you think that you wanted to look after the rainforest too. Maybe the fact that all of the different animals were giving completely different reasons, all really, really important reasons for the man not to chop down the kapok tree. Maybe you had different ideas that persuaded you to want to look after the rainforest. Was there anything else that persuaded you? Fantastic. Now, this isn't a really brilliant example of persuasive writing because when you write your persuasive writing letters, you are going to add more things to make it persuasive. Now, thinking about maybe some of the features that we looked at before half term, can you think of any features that you could add to it to make it more persuasive? What have we looked at? Maybe, I'm not going to give you any clues, but maybe you could add something else to make it more persuasive. Can you pause the video and have a think? Maybe you said you could add some rhetorical questions. We're going to be doing some more work on this over the coming days. Maybe you could have used some powerful adjectives to really describe what that rainforest and the animals and the trees meant to you. Maybe you could have included more, more opinions and lots more facts too. We've been looking at those a lot. And also some emotive language. Now, tomorrow we're going to look closely at emotive language, but emotive language, what do you think that means? Emotive, what does the word emotive mean? 
Mm. Emotive language is language or words that make you feel an emotion. So you might have used a certain, well, they might have used a certain word in the book which might have made you feel quite sad or quite um, upset or worried. And that word is considered as emotive language. And that is used in persuasive writing a lot. Now, your task today is to fill out this analysis frame. So you are going to write a short summary of the book to tell people what it's about. You're going to think about what the main message of the book is and what facts do we learn about the rainforest to consider it as a non-fiction piece of text. Apart from the fact it is a fictional book, but we know that it has non-fictional information. How does the book persuade the reader to look after the rainforest? What do people say? What does the um what what do the people do? And what could you add to it to make it more persuasive? Now, I've had a go myself and I think mine is a super example. Is it? Can you pause the video and tell me why it's not a very good example of an analysis frame, please? Off you go. Okay, well, you might have said that firstly, Miss Newman, this is not a summary. I need to use all four of my lines to write a short summary of the book. Also, this is not a, rain, um, a message of the book to look after the rainforest. I need to include all four lines and I need to make sure that I am expanding my thoughts. And here, yes, we have learned that there are different animals in the rainforest, but what did we learn about why the trees are so important? Maybe it does make you want to look after the rainforest, but how? How does it book? How does that do that? What characters make you make you want to look after the rainforest and why? What is it that they said that's made you really want to do something different? And finally, yes, you could add some emotional language, but we don't call it emotional language. We call it emotive language. And we wouldn't be making the reader think twice about cutting the trees. We aren't cutting the trees. The axe man is. OK, so when you do yours, you need to make sure you fill up all of the lines available as much detail as you can. OK, and I will be checking. All right. So that is your task for today. Your final plenary then is a fairy tale, an example of a fiction or a nonfiction text and why. Well done. A fairy tale is an example of a fictional text because it's a story with made up characters. Fantastic. There are no facts in there. Have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in our next lesson. Goodbye.